Hi friends, Christy here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Sorry about my voice today. It is still not back <laughs> from, I don't know, whatever kind of cold I have going on. But it is a Friday and it's not a typical weekend that I do a vlog, but I am going to do one anyways. Because every year during middle grade March, I like to take one weekend where I read mainly Newbery books and this is the weekend. So I'm going to do a little Newbery weekend vlog. I have all of my Newbery books up here. So I'm going to turn the camera around and go ahead and make my choices. It's Friday morning. I'm going to see if I can pick out four. I know in past years I've done four to six. It just depends on what little ones I have and what I can find on audio and all that. So we're going to take a look at my shelf and pick out a couple. Let's see. Okay, before we get to looking at those, I already know I'm going to read The Eyes and the Impossible by Dave Eggers. This is the current year Newbery winner. So I am going to try to find this one on audio, but it does have some really cute illustrations as well. That is going to be number one. Let's just set it here. The Eyes and the Impossible. If we look here, this is the most <laughs> current, and then it goes all the way down to the first one, which was 1922. I'm going to try to pick a few things in here. So I already know <laughs> this Missing May is really tiny. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this one out because it should be it should be a really quick read. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that one in the stack. And then I also think this Good Masters Sweet Ladies is also is my list pretty small and it's one of the only ones up here that I haven't read yet so let's put that I think this is going to have poetry so that should be fun to mix things up then let's see what we have here um summer of the swans and sounder are both pretty small I'm going to put those down here just depends on what I can find on audio. Okay, looking down here. I have some turned around backwards that I've read already, but quite a few that I haven't. Here's another little one, call it courage. <laughs> it's fun to just get a whole bunch knocked out. I'm pretty sure Shen of the Sea is short stories. Chinese stories for children. I'm going to pull that one because short stories might be fun to do. And then, oh man, I don't know. I want to get one longer one, maybe. Let's do, let's see if I can find Ginger Pie by Eleanor Eastis. Okay, so here's, here's what I have. <laughs> Quite a few little ones. Missing May, Ginger Pie, Shen of the Sea, Call It Courage, The Summer of the Swans, Sounder, Good Master, Sweet Ladies, and The Eyes for and The Impossible by Dave Eggers. I'm going to go ahead now and take a look and see if I can get any of these on audiobook, because that would definitely increase the probability of them getting read. I'll let you know in just a few minutes. Okay, here's the breakdown. <laughs> I will be picking up The Eyes and The Impossible in print. So during reading sprints or when I'm ready to just sit down for a few minutes here and there, I will be reading this one in print. Not sure I'll fully finish it this weekend because I just read faster on audio. Then we have this Good Masters Sweet Ladies, which I will also be reading in print. This is kind of cool. It is voices from a medieval village. There are 19 miniature plays, 19 monologues. Or, and two dialogues for two actors. So it's kind of like they're written in poetry. So they're like this, but they will be pretty easy to read and quick. So I'm going to try to still do this in print as well. These two I was not able to find an audio for. Shen of the Sea is the short story one. Missing May, I don't have an audio for that. So I'm going to probably not get to these two if I'm already planning to read those other ones in print. But both Call It Courage and Sounder, the audiobook is only two hours long, and I listen at increased speed, so it's less than two hours. So those will definitely get read. Summer of the Swans I found and borrowed, and it is a three-hour audio, so that will be also pretty quick. I'll get that done as well. And then Ginger Pie I did find and borrow as well. This is a six-hour audio. I will hopefully get to this one as well. The only other thing that I'm also reading this weekend is Nowhere Boy by Katherine Marsh. I am doing this as a buddy read with one of my patrons and friends and Michelle. She has a channel now, Michelle Lynn Reads. So we're reading this one together because I read Lost Year 
mainly on her recommendation and absolutely loved it. So this is Catherine Marsh's backlist title. And so we're reading this together. I've already read just the first few chapters and really love it so far. So I'm going to continue with this this weekend as well, as well as this stack. That's six. <laughs> That's six new berries. I would be thrilled if I could get through six more. Um, Obviously, my goal is to read through all of the Newbery winners. I'm not as much worried about the honor books. I will maybe tackle that some other time. I probably will not collect them. We'll see about that being a project once I finish reading all the Newberries. But it's kind of like a in my lifetime goal. I'm not planning on finishing it this year or anything like that. But I do like to make some progress on it every March, especially. So yeah, I'm going to get these books read and I will check in as I finish one or two here and there and let you know my progress throughout the weekend. Um, so hopefully by Sunday night, I will have a stack ready to share with you. Maybe a few others on there as well. We'll see what the weekend brings. I'll keep you posted. All right. Hello. It is almost noon and I am at my little dude's school to pick him up and getting ready for work for the afternoon. But I have finished one book already. I listened to Call It Courage this morning by Armstrong Ferry, I think is the author. I'll show it to you later. Uh, it is basically a survival story. So we follow this little boy. I can't remember exactly his name. I just think of him as Mufasa. It's something like that. It takes place in the Pacific Islands, I believe. And he is really struggling Um courage is something that is greatly valued in his people and he doesn't feel like he's very courageous. He's had a couple instances where he felt very afraid and so one day he kind of takes off in a canoe to capture the sea because he's afraid of the sea and he's gonna go, I don't know, fish, find a big fish, something like that. But while out in his canoe, look at those little hairs right there, those are fabulous. <laughs> while out in his canoe, a storm comes up and he is in the canoe with his dog and an albatross. But, well, the albatross comes and goes. A storm comes up, capsizes him, and he, like, it breaks the mask. There was a little sailing mast. Uh, breaks that. He loses his knife, loses his oar. He's kind of stranded in this canoe for a little while, a day, two days. And then he sees land, which is another island, not his home, but another island. Um, and so he lands on this other island, injures himself in the process, and has to survive on this other island, which is a part of a group of islands, I believe. And on one of the islands, he calls them man eaters. So potential cannibals, not so nice people live there. There's like a, a, a statue of a god, part of their religion. And so he encounters these people a couple times. Um, in the process, he does a couple things and gets braver as the story goes on. It has a couple experiences where he has to have courage in order to survive. And he does. And I mean, it's an old book. So spoiler alert, he makes it back home. <laughs> and everybody is so glad to see him. And it's a, just a short little story of this boy finding his courage. And I like a survival story. So I thought it was good. It's not a new favorite or anything like that, but it was a nice, it was a nice little story. It was enjoyable. I also listened to five more chapters of The Nowhere Boy, which is my buddy read that I'm doing. And then I just started on this drive. I just start, started Sounder, um, which is about uh, a boy and a dog named Sounder. So totally different. I think we're in America now in the South, um, a black family and this hunting dog named Sounder. So I don't really know much yet. I just started like 20 minutes ago. I also painted my nails and picked up lunch from the from the gas station from Wawa. They have good subs. It's something I treat myself to a lot of Fridays. And now I'm cars are moving. So I need to get going. I'll check in later. I've got to angle myself so that you don't see all the dirty dishes on the counter over there. Ah! I am doing reading sprints on Hannah's channel. Well, I'm not on the sprints, but I'm participating in the comments. Hannah, the teacher's TBR, she does sprints most Fridays, and I just finished listening to Sounder. And it was sad. It was really sad. Um, it's just, yeah, about this family and a situation that happened with the dad getting sent to jail and then to a work camp. 
and their coon dog and how the dog loved the dad. And it was kind of a slower paced story, but the ending was really beautiful, but sad, <laughs> really sad. Uh, so now I'm going to switch to something that I think will be a little more lighthearted and hopefully funny, ginger pie. I'm going to give that one a go. And then I literally only have the green spots left <laughs> on this puzzle. So I'm going to do it for a little bit. But if it gets too frustrating, I'm going to take a break and go sit in the other room and start the eyes and the impossible. So that is the plan. It is, oh, it's 9.53. I'm not quite ready for bed. So yeah, I'm going to work on this puzzle for a few more minutes. I've been working on it for a little while. And then I'm going to go sit in the other room and read in there for a little bit. And yeah, that's the plan for the evening. I don't think I'll check back in since I will not finish either of those two, but I'd like to start both of them. <laughs> we'll see. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hello, my friends. I have not popped on at all today. It is five, almost five o'clock. And I just finished Ginger Pie, listening to this one. This was one of the longer audiobooks, and I just finished listening to it. I have been a total, complete bum today. I've barely moved. <laughs> I did dishes and I posted some things on Pango, but I've also been watching quite a few episodes of Love Island. I finished the puzzle while I was listening to this this morning, later, early, late morning. Um, yeah, I didn't get as much reading done today as I maybe would have wanted to, but I did get a lot of relaxing in and I think I just needed that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to kick this cold and I have to sing at church tomorrow and tomorrow is going to be a very busy day. So I've just been a bum, but this book was a cute story. I am not a dog person. I've never been shy about sharing that. I'm just not a big pet person. And this is a story of a brother and a sister who want to get a dog and they save up money and they get a little dog and then it goes missing and they search and search and search for the dog. And it was really cute story. I didn't care as much about the dog parts, but I really liked the brother and sister's relationship. I thought that that was really sweet. So it was a cute story, but ultimately not a new favorite. So glad I read it. Got one more done. So I've read three so far this weekend. I'm, I'm going to like get up. I actually don't feel like it's too bad. I might do something to my hair. I don't know. Um, I was planning on doing some filming today. I I had all kinds of plans for today, but I think I just needed to have a very chill day. And so I did. Tonight, I'm going to probably participate in sprints. I think I'll do my sprints tomorrow night. Um, so tonight, I will read more of The Eyes and the Impossible. I just read a few pages last night. And also, I'll probably do Good Master Sweet Ladies, get this one knocked out as well, and maybe even get this on audio as well. Um, I will need an audio for tomorrow because I have quite a few things going on and I have a little bit of car time. So I'm going to need to get another Newberry on audio. I might have listened to the three that I downloaded yesterday. So we'll see what I can find. But tonight, the goal is Good Master Sweet Ladies and get further in the eyes and the impossible. I'm not loving the writing style of this one, but maybe once the story gets going a little farther, I won't mind it as much, I hope. But at the beginning, I was like, not, not really connecting with the writing at all. And it's told from the perspective of a dog, which again, is just not my favorite thing. But it's a wild dog who lives in a park and is the eyes for the bison who are kind of like the matriarch and patriarch of the park. They kind of make the rules. They're kind of in charge, but they're stuck in their pen. And so this dog is their eyes, telling them all the the goss, the juicy gossip of the park. <laughs> so we'll see how we'll see how it goes once the story gets going. I'm not really sure what the story is even gonna be. Yeah, we'll see what I find for an audiobook later too. But right now I'm gonna get up and practice my worship stuff for tomorrow drink some hot tea. Hopefully that will help uh, this voice to come back a little bit more so I can sing for tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Yikes. <laughs> hey, here I am still in my chair. It's about 20 after 10, which is really 20 after 11 because the time changes tonight. Yikes. So I need to go to bed, but I just finished Good Masters Sweet Ladies and I really enjoyed this. So it turns out the author, Laura Amy Schlitz, 
is a librarian, a school librarian, and she wrote this series of poems for the kids in her school to do as plays. They were doing a huge study on medieval times and were very into it, baking bread, making catapults, like the whole nine yards. And instead of just writing a play where each person got a small part and it's hard to come up with 17 speaking parts for, I think each class had about 17 students. So she wrote this book of one act, like short little plays, monologues, kind of representing all the different people in a medieval village. So like the daughters of the Lord and an apprentice and a, a beggar and like the tanner and the blacksmith's daughter, like all of these different characters each has their own little monologue. It was delightful. There was humor. Some of them rhymed, some of them didn't. So there's different kinds of poetry. I could totally imagine a class doing a study on medieval times, putting on a show with these plays. I thought that this was a delight. There were interspersed with the poems or the the monologues. There were these little teaching pages that talked about like how the farmers would have three fields and one of them would be fallow every three years. Like one of them would be be resting every every couple of years. The three field system talked about Jewish people and why at the time there was a lot of animosity towards them. One of them was about freedom and how it worked, like the Lord of the Manor, um, how millers would often cheat people. Like there's just a lot to learn in here, but it was done in such a fun way. This is fabulous. I'm giving it four stars. So far, this is my favorite of the middle of the Newberry books I've read this weekend. Yeah, it was a delight. And I also today read a tiny bit more in the eyes and the impossible met a few other animals that are like assistant eyes. <laughs> I didn't get very much read in that. So that will be a focus while I'm home tomorrow. And then I also still need to figure out where, what I can find for another audiobook while I'm out and about. I think I did find some, but I don't remember what it is. So before I go to bed, I'll double check that I have an audiobook and let you know what that is tomorrow. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to sing tomorrow. My voice has not come back. It doesn't hurt at all, but it is really rough and like raw. I had a cup of tea tonight, hoping to like soothe things a little bit. Didn't work so good. So we'll see. We'll see how I am tomorrow, but I need to get going and go to bed. I will chat with you tomorrow. All right. I finished two more books, so I'm going to talk about those two and then Wrap, kind of wrap everything up. But earlier today, I listened to A Gathering of Days, a novel by Joan Bloss. This is a journal of a girl who lives in New England, in New Hampshire. It's kind of a coming of age story as she deals with the loss of her mother and a little brother and eventually her father getting remarried. It just kind of like pioneer life. It's from 1830 to 1832. Uh, it was okay just kind of snippets of life, friendships, uh, loss, sickness. And I enjoyed it, but not like, I didn't love it, love it. It was okay. It was okay. But tonight, haha, I was not expecting to finish this book, but I totally did. The Eyes and the Impossible by Dave Eggers. And I absolutely loved it. I'm even debating, like, is this a five-star read? I think no, because I didn't get along with the writing at the beginning. But once I was into the story, I did really like it. So we follow this dog named Johannes who lives in this park and he just loves to run, 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 run. And we kind of meet all the other animals in the park and kind of overseeing the park are these three bison and the dog, Johannes, is their eyes. So he has all these assistant eyes animals as well and they meet every day to kind of talk about all the different things that happen in the park and Johannes gathers the information, brings it to the bison, and then they direct what needs to be done about some of these different situations. Um, so we kind of see pro progress in the park as they build a new, it's almost like a museum. And uh, as tourists come in, 
cars and the park people and all of this, like all of these animals trying to survive in this park, especially this dog. He kind of gets himself into trouble at one point and the other, other animals have to come and rescue him. But then there's this big event towards the end that got pretty exciting. I don't know. I just, I really just enjoyed this book and I did not expect to. So I think that going in with really low expectations helped me. But this is my favorite of the weekend. So let me see. Which was my least favorite? I think probably A Gathering of Days was my least favorite. And then we'll go with Ginger Pie. Because this also was just about like a family and their dog. <laughs> then maybe Call It Courage. The survival story about a little boy coming of age. Also getting his finding his courage. It was good. I didn't really hate any of them. Like it was good, but it wasn't, it was not my favorite. And then Sounder and then <laughs> Good Master Sweet Ladies. I really loved this one. And then my favorite for the weekend is The Eyes of the Impossible. Can I carry these? Oh, no. Okay. So here's my stack from favorite on the outside to least favorite closest to me. Six books completed this weekend. I'm very happy about that. Six Newberries knocked off my list. Woohoo! I would love to hear if you've read any of these. What did you think about them? Yeah. And I know a couple of you are also doing a Newberry project. So I'd love to know how your progress is going on that as well. And anything else you guys want to chat about? I always love talking with you in the comments. But thanks for coming along for a little Newberry weekend. I am now ahead of schedule for reading a book a day. I think I'm now, this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now I'm at 13 and today's only the 10th. I love that for me. <laughs> All right. I will talk to you in another video very soon. Bye.